calculating before tax cash flow is easy if you already know how to calculate net operating income because you take net operating income and subtract out debt service in order to get before tax cash flow. So the key is to remember how to calculate net operating income. And if you recall, net operating income is a given. Gross income minus vacancy and collection equals effective gross income. Also recall that this is a very common distractor on an exam problem where they give you effective gross income and hope that you will back out vacancy and collection again, but you won't fall for that. Then you back out allowable operating expenses. <clears throat> There's no debt service, no depreciation, and no capital improvements. When you do that, you calculate net operating income, then you'll just do the steps up here. Back out debt service, and you get before tax cash flow. Pause the recording and try to solve this problem. Recall from the previous page given gross income minus vacancy and collection is effective gross income. From there, you back out the allowable operating expenses to calculate net operating income. And then you back out debt service to calculate before tax cash flow. In this problem, they have given us the effective gross income of $275,000. So we're skipping here and here, and we can drop down to effective gross income. Again, one of the number one distractors in these types of problems. Next, we back out the management fee of $27,500 and the allowable operating expenses of $98,000. Recalling that we can't back out, so no to depreciation and no to debt service. When we do that, we calculate net operating income of $149,500. Then we're going to back out debt service of $39,000 for before tax cash flow of $110,500. In this problem, you're going to need to work backwards to calculate what the gross income needs to be in order to have a cash flow of $2,149,200. So recall gross income minus vacancy and collection is effective gross income. Back out from that operating expenses to get net operating income back out from there, debt service, and you have your before tax cash flow. So we start out with the $2,149,200. To that, we're going to add back our debt service of $65,000 to get a net operating income of $2,000,000. $214,200. Next, we're going to add back our operating expenses. We don't take into account depreciation. There are other operating expenses of $122,000, a management fee of $203,000. And when we do that, we get an effective gross income of $2,000,000. $539,200. This is where it gets a little tricky because we're having to calculate vacancy and collection and we have a percentage amount. So we have to agree that gross, commission, gross income is 100% of what we need to, to have. 
uh, vacancy in collection is 8%. So effective gross income is 92% of the total. And so if we divide our effective gross income by 92%, you'll get a gross income of $2,760,000. Now, there are 200 units in the complex, and the question is asking us for the yearly rent. So we're just going to divide this by 200 units, and you get $13,800 as your answer. Keep in mind that they might try to trip you up. Instead of having that as yearly, they could say monthly. And if you had to do that, you're going to just divide the 13.8 by 12 to get that answer. For additional videos, visit the class website. Remember, you can post questions under the discussion tab to collaborate with other students.